Can I say I was kind of happy? No, seriously, I was though. It was it's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, he did. But I was happy as hell when, when I found out why I was dead. I cooked for the whole day. Believe it or not, FBG Buddha isn't the only gangster disciple who felt this way when the news spread. King Von's death was both celebrated and mourned throughout Chirac. Each and every gang member was aware of who this man was. It's safe to say, most of these reasons weren't the best. Growing up, Davon Daquan Bennett, also known as King Von, made a lot of friends in from the Black Disciples. But knowing how dangerous he was and what the things he did that made him famous were, he made a lot more enemies. So why was he killed? Who shot him? And what was the motive? To know this, we must go back to the very beginning. Growing up in O Block with his mom and six half-siblings wasn't the ideal conditions for a kid like Vaughn. His life took a turn at the very early age of 11 when his father was shot in a botched drug deal. His dad, Silk, was also a gang member and Vaughn said that he couldn't sleep at night ever since he passed. Vaughn mentioned Silk on a lot of tracks, usually shouting out his name followed by a rest in peace. Even though it happened in 2005, Vaughn talked about him till the year he died. But he's just like Vaughn, big heart, he you, you got a big heart. If you got $10 in this, me and you, he got five. You know what I'm saying, that's how he moves. But you don't wanna see him though. But just because he didn't have a father, didn't technically mean that he grew up without a support system. His mom's house was at the corner of 64th and Martin Luther King Drive, which just so happened to be near the homes of Lil Durk and Chief Keith. Vaughn and Durk were childhood friends and grew up together, influencing each other's sound and life on the street. He made a name for himself as one of the most feared shooters in Chicago. Almost every gang feared him to the point that they didn't even mess with Lil Durk because of how close they were. Vaughn considered himself the grandson of King David, the activist who founded the Black Disciples. He called himself Grandson. This nickname was a hit or miss. Some BDs went with it, while others found it disrespectful to the founder of their gang. Yeah, yeah, King Bomb was um, an inspiration to everybody, you know, yeah. and um, he was a good guy. And see, that's just like I just said, you did King David like a father to me. And Bomb saying King David like his granddad, you see. And when people honor people like that, that's how they feel. You see what I'm saying? And he felt that was his granddad. Just like I felt you did, he was my father. Because I rode around with him for real when I was young. He ate at my house. He slept at my house. Vaughn said that when he was in jail for his countless offenses, the people there told him he reminded them of King David. The turning point of Vaughn's life was when his father died in 2005. That's when he turned to a life on the streets, crime, and violence. He moved to Weak City between the years 2008 and 2009, where he befriended a lot of gang members. Vaughn found a home in them, but had no idea what he was signing up for. Some of these people were O.D., T-Roy, Big A, Trey Five, White White, J. Munna, Boss Stop, and more. Vaughn also moved schools and started attending Hyde Park Academy, where he met a few people from the GD side. Names like FBG Duck and Lil Mark wouldn't be the last time he heard them. Fights at school were just the beginning. He was making enemies early and looking at where life was about to take him in a couple of years. This was very dangerous, but it definitely wasn't as dangerous as bringing guns to school just to show them off to his classmates. It's amazing how he was never caught and expelled on the spot. The first time he found himself behind bars was in January 2011 at the age of 16. He was sent to juvenile detention for armed robbery. It was clear that education wasn't his number one priority. While in prison, he earned his GED and attended a couple of classes at South Suburban College after getting out. Two years later, he was arrested for possessing a firearm without a license. By the time he was 18, the trajectory of his life changed forever. Vaughn eventually dropped out of college and wanted nothing to do with being the average citizen. In July 2014, at the age of 19, he was a part of his first trial that involved a one count of first-degree murder and two counts of attempted murder. All of this was a part of a violent incident between gang members. But this was just the beginning of his beef, rivalries, and murders. On October 13, 2012, Vaughn was out for blood, saying he was getting dry and that he hadn't dropped a body in a long time. Since Vaughn was from O-Block, one of his rival gangs was STL-EBT, also known as Tukaville. He tweeted them saying their gang would get shut down fast and that somebody should come get him. Vaughn was with T-Roy and J. Muna at the time when they caught Modell, a member of STL-EBT, lacking with his friends and talking to a girl. Vaughn got out of his car and opened fire multiple times on Modell's chest. Modell's cousin tried protecting him, but that didn't stop Vaughn. 
He was just 18 years old, but so ruthless that he continued firing his Glock and paralyzing his cousin. Vaughn was making new enemies every other week. It was clear that he was going to be devoting his life to O Block and would take out anyone who came in his way. To think that sh Modell would be enough to feed his hunger. His next body was just under three weeks later. This time, he didn't have T Roy by his side because he was trying to catch up. This was another way of saying that Vaughn was trying to catch more bodies than T Roy. This could only mean that T Roy was responsible for the murder of Dale from STL, Doc from EBT, and Dirty Rel from Jarrow City. People think that Vaughn's hit list only consisted of Doc and Modell. The true suspect for Doc's murder is still unknown, so people in Chirac think that either of these two O Block members did it. Now, Dale, Doc, Modell, and Dirty Rel were all important members of their gangs. Their murders reached Chicago headlines, and their families were devastated. So, Vaughn's next target was P5 Crack from Jaro City. Like always, he tweeted an hour before he made his move. This time, he was with J Money, Big A, and L.A. Capone. There was some diversity on Vaughn's end because Capone is from the 600 sect. The four of them walked up to P5 and opened fire, who tried to make a run for it. J Money shot him from the back, which caused P5 to drop to the ground. Vaughn then stood over his body and shot at his face multiple times before they made a run for it. P5 died on the 6200 block of South Eberhardt Avenue. Vaughn mocked his victims once again by hopping on Twitter and tweeting about it. Since P5's murder took place at around 8.30 to 9 a.m., he tweeted, The early bird catches the worm. With around three bodies to his name, Vaughn was a wanted man by the people from Tukaville and Jaro City. He moved his hit list back to STL by EBT the very next month. He kept tweeting about wanting to kill people as if it were some kind of addiction. Vaughn now called himself captain of the drill team. He thought he was invincible both from rival gang members and the police. He'd tweet about never getting caught red-handed, and if he did, he'd never blame it on someone else. Vaughn and T-Roy teamed up again to set Boss Trell up because he thought he was about to buy a gun. On November 7th, the Tukaville member noticed that a bunch of O-Block members were waiting for him at the meetup point and immediately made a run for it. Like Vaughn's other prey, this didn't make it out alive either. T-Roy and Vaughn then tweeted the hashtag man down just hours after they shot Boss Trell. Vaughn then put a hit on someone from Tay City. A week after killing Bostrell, he put together a team that included Bite Down, Blast His, Expletive, and M.T. Thang, all from the 600 sect. They walked up to 32-year-old Baby James and shot him in the shoulder and chest. This gave Vaughn reason to flex on the lives he took and how they now add to the list of GDs he's taken out. The ironic part is that Vaughn still didn't get caught and he was arrested for a gun charge. None of the previous murders were questioned. People in the hood really started to believe this man was ruthless and invincible. But the fact that he got away with five murders even after being in prison for two years made a lot of people think that he was a snitch. Now, being a snitch in Chirac is a death sentence on its own. Since the rumor of Vaughn being a snitch was spreading fast, he was an even bigger target. After getting into heated arguments with members of rival gangs on Twitter, he wanted to settle the score with all the trash talk he was hearing from 051 Young Money. This was a very dangerous decision on Vaughn's end because of how feared 051 Melly was at around this time. Chirac considered these two to be the most feared shooters in town. This looked like it was going to lead up to a very violent showdown, but that exactly wasn't the case. In September 2013, Lake Capone was murdered and every gang was out to get 051 Young Money because of how everyone respected him. Word had it that 051 Mick was the one who shot him and the entire O Block was about to get revenge. To make things worse, Lil Mark dropped no competition in March 2014 and dissed 11 dead people. He even made fun of Rondo No. 9 because he got shot the day after Capone's death. The song was a remix of Lil Durk's competition. The Durk's beat was being used against him. Lil Mark dissed members of O Block and 600 and called himself a BDK, short for Black Disciples Killer. Lil Mark was the biggest target on the block. He escaped death twice just 72 hours after he dropped no competition. The streets were not playing with his DCs and wanted to keep him quiet for good. No one wanted Mark to step foot in the studio ever again. On March 28, 2014, at around 1.30 p.m., Lil Mark was waiting for his bus on 415E, 51st Street, east of King Drive. This was very close to O Block territory. 
A silver minivan pulled up in front of him and all people could hear was the sound of gunshots. It was no surprise to find out who was behind this murder. Vaughn tweeted things like, whack a N-word on St. Lawrence and go and chill out on 600 and shoot him in his face a couple of times just to make sure he die fast. At the time, Vaughn was on house arrest because he was just released from jail after being charged with gun possession. He swore that he'd go back to dropping bodies as soon as he was free from his ankle monitor. He even said that he bought a new gun and wanted to test it out by going on a drive-by. Vaughn was practically live tweeting the murder with updates like him being stuck in traffic and picking up D. Rose, another member of O Block. The minivan that was used to deal with Lil Mark was found in the 3700 block of South Ellis Avenue. The police could have easily traced DNA samples and found who was responsible for this. The only problem is that the vehicle was found in flames. After the shooting, both D. Rose and King Vaughn were dissing Lil Mark on Twitter. The cherry on top was Vaughn making fun of Tuca, who was Lil Mark's younger brother. Tuca is probably one of the most disrespected gang members in the history of Drill. Every single rapper has dissed him in one song or the other. Whether it's Lil Durk, King Vaughn, or even Chief Keith, that little kid was not safe from any bar. Bus stop, man. Hey, this this hey 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 this bus stop right here though. This 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 a real famous place. Yeah, this a real famous place, big. Hey, this bus stop is a real famous place, big. I ain't gonna lie to you. Fans thought that this would be the end of Vaughn's reign of terror. Some of them refused to believe that they were listening to music made by an actual serial killer. But was the grandson of King David done? Did he want to make more enemies than he already did? Zero, five, one. Young Money was more than furious and ready to settle the score. First Tuca and now Lil Mark. What could possibly be next? On April 11th, 2014, 17-year-old Garkira Barnes, who called herself K.I. amongst the GDs, was killed by a man wearing a gray hoodie and blue jeans. The police pointed their fingers at none other than Vaughn, who was held for questioning. He was never charged by an eyewitness who said that he was the shooter. The evidence was in his favor because nothing was concrete enough to lock the rapper up. K.I. was Taekwon Taylor's sister, another GD who lost his life in 2012. After losing her brother, she started calling out rival gang members on social media, making her an easy target for most people. Her mother thought that she was an innocent kid who attended her classes at school and didn't get into much trouble. The truth is that K.I. had been involved in multiple shootings. Since social media was her one tool to use as a GD, she posted her location on Twitter to stand her ground. O Block members like King Von and T. Roy were pretty active on the platform, so it wasn't too hard tracking her down. K.I. was with FBG Butta walking the street when a car with Vaughn, T. Roy, and Big A stopped and opened fire on her with nine shots. After taking her to the hospital, she was pronounced dead. Vaughn wasted no time dissing her on Twitter, which piled up as evidence. In 2021, the police confirmed that Vaughn was the one who killed Gakira Barnes, but it was too little too late. Vaughn, on the other hand, had other motives. I was like, damn. K.I. told her friends and family that Vaughn didn't want to be in a relationship with her, but rather shoot her when he got the chance. He made it look like he was romantically interested in her, but it was all a plan to have one less GD member off the streets. At this point, even the people of Chirac were trying to keep count of who was King Vaughn's op and who wasn't. He had no remorse for taking anyone's life, even if it was a 17-year-old girl's. Vaughn even tried to go after YouTubers who were narrating his life story and crimes. One of these was Trap Lore, a YouTuber who made three mini documentaries on King Vaughn. When he found out that a channel was telling thousands of viewers that he killed K.I., he tried bringing the whole account down. And in my video, I, I talked about the situation with K.I., more specifically how, you know, supposedly there were DMs between him and K.I. that leaked onto 4chan and, uh, you know, kind of just explain the story that basically there seems to suggest on this forum that people think that he did that murder. Um, he was very upset about this and uh, he tried to, well, they gave me three copyright strikes because I did three little mini videos about him. Uh, so you know you know how his three copyright strikes, I nearly lost the channel. On July 24th, Vaughn and Big Mike attended a house party where they ran into Malcolm Stuckey. Stuckey was also a GD and was at the party with a friend of his. All it took was for those two to give Vaughn and Big Mike a weird look for him to go to his car, grab a 40 Smith and Wesson and start shooting at them without hesitation. But here's where things get interesting. Since both Vaughn and Mike were in a lot of trouble with the police, Mike planned to testify against his friend. He wanted to say that they chased them outside the house where he shot one man on the foot, while Vaughn shot the other and broke his jaw. It was his last-minute decision not to go forward with it, but it was of no use. 
Big Mike was sentenced to 28 years for aggravated battery with a firearm. As for Vaughn, he was acquitted of all charges. But Mike being ready to testify in court had everyone labeling him a snitch, something no gang member could ever let slide. His life was on the line, and he had to go underground as soon as possible. When confronted with what happened that night, here's what Big Mike has to say. A lot of people is giving out false information. I was never at the party, my nigga, to begin with. They said King Von came and got you. I was came and got. You feel me? I was came and got. And then I went back to the party. Big Mike's brother, Wooski, would have his back during this very sensitive time. Now, Wooski was born and raised in O-Block, but that didn't stop him from forming alliances with other gang members. This may come off as a surprise, but it's very common for rival gangs to have a couple of members who are chill with each other. So Wooski hung out with St. Lawrence and E-Block Territory, two sets of the gangster disciples. This was after he had to move out from O-Block when he was 12 years old. This raised a question of gang members moving homes and staying loyal to their sets. Wooski befriended FBG Duck, Lil Jojo, and Lil J. He was now considered King Von's op, and they exchanged blows on Twitter. This led to FBG Duck's murder on 4th August 2020. Duck was outside shopping for his kids when two vans stopped in front of him and the men from inside opened fire. He tried shooting back, but unfortunately, his gun got jammed. Turns out, Von put a $50,000 bounty on Duck's head. He was getting impatient and doubled the amount. After the job was done, Von celebrated by going on Instagram Live and counting his money for everyone to see. This turned into a heavy legal case with six O-Block members getting charged with murder. C. Murda, Kenny Mack, Los, C. Thang, Teezy, and Muwap were all arrested with different sentences. Some members like Zell Mana realized the amount of trouble he was in and how many years he'd have to spend behind bars. To avoid that, he took his own life in 2021. King Von wasn't alive at the time, but if he was, he'd be charged for every single murder that he had ever committed. What events led to his death? In 2019, both Von and Dirk were arrested after they were suspected to be part of a shooting in Atlanta. Both of them were charged with felon in possession of a firearm, along with criminal intent to commit murder. The news went global, and the two were about to go on tour. Von already started his rap career and was making a lot more money than he could have ever imagined. It looked like his career was just popping off, and there could be a slight possibility of him throwing in the towel and leaving the street life. But on November 6, 2020, Von and his team left the Opium Nightclub in Atlanta. He was still a felon, so he couldn't have any protection, firearm, or weapons on him. Quando Rando from the Rollins 60s neighborhood Crips got into an altercation with Vaughn. Quando's friend, Lil Tim, pulled out a gun and shot Vaughn multiple times in the chest. Tim was shot too by Vaughn's O-Block friends. Three men, including Vaughn, lost their lives, while the other three were seriously injured. Lil Tim made it out alive, but because of CCTV footage, the police apprehended him and charged him with first-degree murder. The one question on everyone's minds was why this happened in the first place. Vaughn was part of Dirk's gang while Quando was signed with NBA Youngboy. The only beef that these two had was between Lil Dirk and NBA Youngboy. Since Vaughn was Dirk's best friend, he was by his side through all the beef and fights. Fans got to investigating and found that Vaughn was allegedly posting pictures with Youngboy's ex Jania. Even though Vaughn said that they were just making music together, everyone thought there was much more to it. Vaughn even admits that he had no beef with Youngboy and his crew in a video. He said, ain't no rap beef and ain't no real beef unless somebody got shot or something. Other artists and people involved in the drill scene gave their opinions on the matter. Okay, Quando, what are you going to do? Are you going to stand on it? Are you going to try to play peacefully? Because even if he came out and said, yo, I don't want, you know what I'm saying? That would have took an effect on his career because people would have looked at him like he's not like that. He ends up standing on it. He's done some music videos, dissing people and had someone recreated to look like Dirk and it just became a real bad situation. Quando had no explanation for his actions and most of the time avoided answering the questions. He just says that when God tells you it's time, it's time. Some people say that the beef started on Twitter where the two exchanged threats and blows. Even Lil Reese got involved because he wanted a chance to hit Vaughn where it hurt. There's a lot more that happened behind the scenes, which is why the whole drill lore is as massive as it is. Some say that Lul Tam just got a thousand times luckier than Vaughn's previous ops. King Vaughn's death was a major shocker and heavily affected the O-Block, Lil Dirk, and his entire OTF record label. 
His career was just kicking off and these two childhood best friends were going to be unstoppable. Vaughn played with fire for too long and ended up getting shot when he least expected it. No one can imagine the state of Chicago if Vaughn was still alive today. If you enjoyed this video, click on the ones showing on your screen now to watch similar content.